I am a huge fan of the Nintendo Switch, especially the Nintendo Switch online service. It allows you to play a lot of the best classic games for the NES, the Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis digitally on your Nintendo Switch and have it upscaled to HD. The thing that sucks about this, you can't add your own games to it. What if you have, like, Tiny Toon Adventures for the NES? There's no way to play it on something like this. And what if you want to recreate the classic feeling of playing on a CRT or a tube style TV? This, you gotta get some adapters that can introduce lag and other issues. Not a great experience if you wanna just play your retro cartridges on retro televisions. That's where the team over at Hyperkin have recently updated their Retron 3 AV and basically included new controllers with it. There's some new stuff going on under the hood and more. This is the Hyper Beach edition. They also have a red and black edition that allows you again to play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, Genesis, and Mega Drive games right through the system. We're also going to check and see, does it work with things like the Zapper? What about things such as the Famicom Disk System and a Master System adapter for the Sega Genesis? It ain't going to work with the 32X, I'll tell you that right now, it doesn't have the right ports on it. But if it could work with the Master System games through an adapter, it'd be pretty interesting. Now we're going to do this in a couple of different steps. So we're going to capture footage going through here into our RetroTank 5X. Now that is an upscaler, but we're just going to set it to pass through mode at the lowest resolution required for our capture card to record it. I don't know if it will record 240p, the output on this. We may have to do some slight upscaling. If we do, I'll be very transparent about that. I do also want to thank Hyperkin for sending us one of these to look at and test out. They're not reviewing any of this content before this goes live. So let's go ahead, let's throw this on the photo booth, let's see how it comes out of the box. All right, so let's go ahead and open the box here on the Retron 3 AV. There's just a piece of tape sealing it there. And inside the box we have the system itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. And then we do have, let's see, instructions, Hyperkin sticker, box of accessories, and another box of accessories, and a thank you for your support and purchase card. So we're gonna set that aside and clear off the bench. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So this was underneath the system, and we have a controller adapter, NES to Super NES. Huh, interesting because this has, has Super NES ports on it. All right, also in the box we have a power brick. This is normally five volts, one amp. I'll just double check that's what it is. As you can see here, that's exactly what it is, five volts, one amp. And then we have some thin AV cables here. Uh, they are stereo cables, so that's good to see. We have our power cable, and one of the things I am not a fan of is the fact that this is micro USB versus USB-C. I would like to see them upgrade these to USB-C. Now let's take a look inside of the other accessory box here. I'm assuming this is the controllers. Yep, there is the GN6. I think they used to call this the Squire. And then here is the Scout. And I'm probably more familiar with this one just because until recently this was my go-to wireless controller. This actually doesn't feel as good as some of their older controllers. Uh, feels a little bit lighter weight. Interesting. Uh, we do have concave and convex buttons, which I like to see. Good select and start. D-pad feels a little bit light. Hmm, interesting. I'll check out the Squire here as well. I'm sorry, the SN6 or GN6, whatever it's called. The Genesis controller. Yeah, not as big of a fan of these as their regular controllers. So I wonder if they went with a lower grade just to kind of keep the price down on this. Interesting. But now we're going to set this aside. Let's take a look at the system itself because that's kind of the beginning and the end of it. So looking down at the Retron AV itself, you've got a reset and a power button here. The power button does lock into place so it's not a momentary switch. And then you do have a rotary dial here to go from NES, Genesis, and Super NES. 
I, I'm not sure I'm in love with the layout here in relation to the cartridge slots here. If that's going to be the Super Nintendo, which I think it is, then I would like to have that first. Looks like that's the Genesis, that's Nintendo. So, you know, basically just take this and flip it around the other way, at least for my personal feelings. Uh, on the face of it here, you do have player one ports are labeled with a single dot, player two with the second. I, well, I have to check the manual to see why this is included. Now on the back, you do have stereo AV ports here and looks like an NTSC, NTSJ, and I can't tell, looks like first Sega. This is three position. No, it is two position. Looks like that only affects the Sega side of things. And then there is your micro USB power port. Let's take a look at the manual real quick. Because like I say, I'm, there's a couple questions that I have looking at this. So the front is for the NES, Genesis, Super NES. So you know what, I'm good with the labels then on that. Now, one thing I will say a little bit that I wish that this had, like the Retron 5, is the little rubber sort of covers for the controller ports that aren't in use. Um, that would have been nice. And again, note there's a switch on the back for Sega which lets you switch the region of the Genesis slot. You can switch between NTSC U and NTSC J. That's really not necessary. That's really weird. Like, NTSC is NTSC. I, hmm. I wonder if it's different for AV versus HDMI output. Now, it doesn't talk about what that adapter cable is at all. Oh, now I understand. So this is here, so you can use the included scout. Okay, important to note, you have to use this adapter when you are using the included scout controller with NES games. So you can't use the Super NES controller port to work with NES games. You have to have a controller plugged in to the dedicated port. I gotta think this has gotta be close to the same price as just including another controller. So I would have rather see them omit this and include one of their cadet controllers. That, that would be my personal preference. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hook this up, we're gonna see how it plays and test it out. Let's get started. So one of the cool things about where I work now is the fact that Adam is a huge fan of CRTs. I am not. But the nice thing is we can check and see if this system works on CRTs with light guns. I would say don't worry about anything color-wise being off here. That's more the TV than the system itself. But let's see if Duck Hunt works. We are using an original NES zapper. Got him. Now we're gonna cover up the lens just to make sure. Yeah. I would say light gun games are definitely a, a, a working compatible game with the Retron 3 AV. There we go. Perfect first round using the Zapper light gun and the Retron 3 AV on a CRT. All right, so just to be completely transparent here with kind of what I have to do for the capture. So I have my Retro Tank uh, 5X set to 240p output, and that's what you can see behind me here. And in fact, I'm going to bring up the resolution here. Hopefully you can see it in a sec. Let's see here. Output resolution. It is set to... 240p unfortunately my capture card will not record 240p what i found unfortunately is the lowest resolution i can do is 720p so here you can see that so this will actually look better than what you would get just playing through a normal system just as a heads up so i just don't have a way to capture and record the authentic output because of the resolution because it is 240p um, now one of the things on screen here this is the screen for the uh, famicom disk system as you can see here battery error 02 that is a commonplace error with clone based video game systems basically the famicom disk system not compatible 
with this. But we're going to go ahead. We are going to load up Super Mario Brothers for the Famicom because we need to test out is the audio correct. All right, so we've got everything set up and ready to roll here. One of the first tests that we always do is we check out Super Mario Brothers because the coins are a telltale tell on any retro clone console. Now, one thing of note here, you can see even though it's at 720p, you can still see this is not a great picture coming out of here. This is composite video, and there's only so much composite can do. So let's take a play and take a listen. The coins are off. In fact, all of the music is off. Now, I am using the included uh, Scout controller here. Yeah, so this definitely suffers from reverse duty cycle issues, which is interesting because connecting to the uh, Retron 3 HD through composite video, none of those issues. Yeah, there you can hear everything going on it ain't right it is just not right um, and that is what is called a reverse duty cycle issue and basically what that means is essentially the audio is like reversed as far as highs and lows and the way that the audio processor processes everything um, it's weird because of the fact that um, like I mentioned the Retron 3 HD Oh, wow. The capture is freaking out now, too. Um, that's weird because my game is looking fine here, but the capture is freaking out. So uh, we're going to switch to a different game. So we just had a bit of a happy little accident. If you see on screen now, that does say 240p. We were actually able to use the Cloner Alliance capture device, uh, which I... Unfortunately, I don't have enough slack, but there was the remote for it. So, uh, great. We are at 240p now on the Retro Tink. So, essentially, just doing pass-through here. Um, and I have switched to the NES Max controller on screen. This is Bucky O'Hare. This is still on a, a Famicom cartridge. This is actually something I just recently picked up. And uh, it's the first time I'm getting to play it. So, let's dive in here. And as you can see, the text is in Japanese. Interesting, once we get to this part, though, it is in English. So we'll take the green planet to start. Standard NES button presses are working just fine. I think I'm one of the few people that actually like the NES Max controller. Ooh, didn't realize that was an enemy there. Remind me kind of like the things... So this thing shooting there kind of remind me of like something out of Contra. Music sounds decent. Again, it's my first time playing, so I don't know, you know, what this is supposed to look and sound like. Get away from me! But good to know that Bucky O'Hare does play just fine. And glad to know that we're able to get the 240p signal captured properly now as well. Uh, let's move over to the NES games, because what I want to do... What about Battletoads? Through... Now, we do have Battletoads in here. One thing I do want to show before we actually get into the game. This is how I was playing the Famicom games, is I have a 60 to 72 pin adapter that I utilize for that purpose. Now, Hyperkin actually sells one that you can utilize uh, with this as well. I used one of theirs for years, too. Uh, we have also made another controller switch. I've moved to the NES Dogbone, so let us take a look and see how this plays. The biggest thing on here, does it get past level two? Now, now some systems I've had get through most of level two, uh, but inevitably just about every clone that I've ever used. My understanding is the issue is only with the US versions of the game that the PAL system does not have the issues with clones, that there was something either patched or changed or something to the code. Oh, come on. All right, we're going back down some more. And there it is. She locked up, so no go on Battletoads. This is not something that Hyperkin advertises, but this is the Power Base Mini FM, which would allow you to play Master... Uh, 
So while not advertised by Hyperkin, this is the Powerbase Mini FM that allows you to play Master System games through the Sega Genesis. And as you can see here, Sonic 2 is playing. So let's check it out. And we are now switching over to the Genesis controller. Wow, that, that did not feel good latency-wise. I hit a button and Sonic did not react. Whoa. Yeah, button presses do not seem to be as uh, responsive on this as with the uh, NES games. Yeah, this looks and is playing decently enough. Just, you know, a little bit of lag. So I would say unofficially it works, but could be better. So unfortunately, when you put in Virtua Racing, this is what you get. Not compatible. Still, the only like budget type clone that I found that this works with reliably is the Mega Retron HD from Hyperkin as well. This is actually a PAL European game. This is Mickey Mania, and I've talked about in the past how I got this from Irsha Gaming probably about three years ago now. And, and Irene, thank you again so much for sending me this. I really do appreciate it. But let's go ahead and let's check this out. I always thought this was a neat game just because of the way that it incorporated the the different animation styles of Mickey in here. We'll get everything moved on over. I, so I'm glad to see that this does work. I wasn't concerned about whether or not it would work, but I was curious that it listed NTSC uh, J and NTSC U and not PAL versus NTSC, which was a bit bizarre, I thought. Up next, one of my newest games that I've added to my Genesis collection. This is Championship Pro-Am. Basically, it's RC Pro-Am for the Genesis, and it's awesome. This is so awesome looking. Now, granted, it's grainy, and I'm looking forward to actually playing this on my uh, JVC XI with uh, HD Retrovision component video cables, but man, this is exactly what I would have thought a Super NES or Genesis, a 16-bit RC Prime would have looked like. That's pretty awesome! Like the sound, too. Now, I don't think that it's, it has that deep of a sound like a, a Genesis itself would, um, but it's definitely... Whoa, what happened there? We lost... Uh, that was interesting how it basically just crashed. Okay. So definitely some stability issues, which is weird. Um, since this is hardware, not software based, that shouldn't be going on. So here's the Super Game Boy, and I'm back to using the Super Nintendo style controller here. Let's check and see. The colors to me look really washed out. Now, I have modded this uh, Super Game Boy with uh, a clock mod, so that way it actually runs at the proper speed. See, the thing is, with the original uh, Super Game Boy, it actually ran, you know, a couple tenths of a second. I think it ran a little bit slow. Actually, I don't remember if it ran slow or fast, but uh, we do have the clock mod in here for the U.S. version, so basically it runs the same as the Japanese version, which did not have the issues. At least the second blue version of the Super Game Boy did not have those clock issues. So Super Game Boy, like I say, looks a little bit washed out, but, I mean, it's working so another game we just found that is not compatible this is uh yoshi's island super mario world 2 this is my pal version and does not matter which way i flip that switch it does not read it so interesting that at least for this it doesn't read it as a uh, compatible cartridge we're going to try another one of my pal games just to make sure so this is Axelé for the European Super Nintendo, and this is working. Now, I will say that I have found issues in the past with uh, Yoshi's Island not working with some clone consoles properly. Um, some, some systems or some cartridges just kind of have an extra layer of, like, 
blackout protection, I guess. Um, I do have an adapter here that we're going to try out in a second, though. Uh, but we're going to play a little bit of Axelay here first. This is a very challenging shmup. Oh, as you can see, I am doing terribly. Took me no time whatsoever to die there, but at least... It was working. Here is Yoshi's Island playing, and we are again back on the uh, Scout Wired controller. And we'll just dive into here real quick. One of the important things about this is this does show that it is compatible with Super FX chip games. I wish I would not have slept on this game back in the day because I assumed that it was like a baby's game or a really young kid's game when this came out. And man, this is. A, it's a beautiful game. B, it's a fun game. Um, it is so good. I love the design of it so much. Yeah, I think this looks, for what it is, it looks about what I would have expected. The audio seems more authentic on this than, say, the NES side. So overall, I'm, you know, this is, is working pretty much like I expected. Uh, but one of the things we're going to do, one of my go-to tests is always Street Fighter in any system, any controller that I'm testing out. Um, so we are going to finish up on Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo. And the main reason I use Street Fighter 2 as a test is lag, latency, delay. This is something that just I know very well um, as far as how it should feel. So we'll see how this plays. Oh, DJ. Got him there. I'm able to pull off everything so far. The only thing I haven't been able to do, and I only tried once in that fight, was the dragon uppercut. So we're going to see uh, one more time here if we can pull that off. So what are my initial thoughts and feelings on the Retron 3 AV, uh, basically the, the Hyper Beach Edition? Um... I like the fact that it does include both the, the, what I still will call the Squire controller, the Genesis controller, and a Super Nintendo controller. Um, I do wish that they would, instead of including that adapter, simply include a cadet controller for the NES side of things. Um, the audio on the NES side, how it's worse than the audio on the um, Retron 3 HD through AV ports. I don't understand that. I would think that that part of the system would be pretty much identical, but it's not. Um, the compatibility with PAL games is definitely hit and miss. Um, I will say, too, controller-wise, I feel like they are a slightly lower quality than what I've used from them in the past. Um, they just feel thinner and lighter for some reason. Nice double kick. Um, the pins are definitely tight, uh, but not all of them are the same tightness. I will say that the NES side probably felt the best. The Genesis felt the tightest. There we go. We finished them off there. Now, one of the things, too, that I thought was really interesting is the fact that, you know, this did work with Duck Hunt, where a lot of these clone systems will not. Now, granted, this is using AV connections, going to a CRT on something like that. So definitely, you know, more expected than unexpected, I will say. It will not work on something like this uh, through my flat panel. Um, I was disappointed at the reverse du uh, duty cycle issues that the audio had on Mario Brothers and in some of the other games. The palette was really off on the Super Game Boy. Um, the Genesis, uh, some responsiveness issues. Um, I'm not the customer for this product. I would say if you know what a Mr. is or an FPGA or an Analog NT or even HD Retrovision cables, not the system for you. This is designed for someone who is just looking to get their feet back into the water, who's looking to play on an original CRT and maybe found their old collection of games you know, at their folks' place in an attic or down in a basement. Above and beyond that, there are better options out there. But even still, for the money, for under $50 around Black Friday 2023 for the red and black version, which I actually think is a better looking version than the Hyper Beach, um, 
it has its place. Um, is it perfect? No. But it's also under 50 bucks on sale when you can find it. At full price at around $70, yeah, that's a harder sell for me. I would I would honestly recommend if, if that's the pricing that you're looking at, go with the Retron 3 HD. It has all these same capabilities, plus the fact that it has HDMI output on it. And the audio, if you are looking to connect to a CRT, is more accurate, which I was not... Like I mentioned, I was not expecting on here. Um, I do want to thank Hyperkin for sending us one of these to check out. They're not seeing this review before it goes live or anything along those lines. But, I mean, we tested a ton, a ton of games on this. From PAL to Japanese to US. And most of them worked. What didn't work, things I expected. Battletoads Level 2 crashed. I expected that. Very few clone systems can get through that. I did trace down the issue that I had with the power cutting in and out. I was using my Nintendo Switch dock as a power supply. Didn't like that. When I went straight into the power supply it came with, I haven't had any issues. So something to be aware of is to use that OEM power supply or something equivalent power output wise just to make sure that you don't have any brownout issues, which is basically what I was running into. Um, the other thing I do wish is that they did include a 60 to 72 pin adapter in the box. They already make them. They sell them for about 12 bucks. Um, that would have added just a little bit more value to this, especially since it'll play um, Mega Drive. It'll play Super Famicom. Being able to play Famicom, that would have been nice. Also, I would have really liked to have them throw the cadet controller in here in lieu of that adapter. I mean... This is an okay controller for Super Nintendo games. This does not feel as good to me as... Their wireless scout definitely feels more substantial in the hands. It feels more precise. Um, it has more heft and weight to it. It's definitely more substantial, and I prefer playing with that. Um, so I don't know if it's one of the things where these are just more inexpensively made than what those are. This definitely leaves a little bit to be desired. The same with the, I think they call it the GN6. I will always call it the Squire just because that's what it was originally. Um, the fact that it did work with other controllers too, definitely nice to have in there. Now, um, like I say, I'm not the customer for this. Um, they do have other systems out there that depending on what you're looking to do may wind up being a better value for you so make sure you check out the full line of hypercan consoles that they have out there i will have a link on screen right here where you can check out our playlist where we have tested out a ton of different controllers and systems and more from hypercan and you can probably find something here that'll suit your needs <laughs> 